how I stopped worrying and started trust YouTube for CPP wisdom. Mikael Rosbacke, freelance D++ developer since many years. It's a true meta talk, a talk about talks. So let's start. I spend way too much time on YouTube. So um, what is it good for? How do you learn C++ today? You start with books, you do some programming, you get tired of the books, you try to find new books, um, somewhere you want to see some people. You go to meetup groups, but at finally you find YouTube. I'm not sponsored. <laughs> so what do you find on YouTube? You can find conferences. Uh, these are the ones I mainly draw my wisdom from. Uh, CppCon, most people know about, but meeting CPP, ACU, and CPP now was a good, and a few talks from Pacific C++. And then you have all these user groups like this one that's also out there. So it's a good place to go. There's a lot of people. Uh, I can say from start here, uh, the, this is online. If you want to see something, find the talk, put it into Google, and you find it. So see this as a smurgos board of different stuff to select from. The big names. Also, these are the ones that I found interesting. Um, maybe they're not for everybody, but that's the... I got something out of these guys. All the big names, uh, some less known. It's, they all made some good contributions. So let's start. <laughs> multi-threading. You're interested in multi-threading. Uh, Kevlin Henney is a British guy. Always interesting to look at. He's a very good presenter, so it's fun talks to um, look to have. Uh, think outside the synchronization quadrant. It's a good one just to be able to don't share anything, then you don't have any problems. Uh, Ansel Schirmersheim, not sure how his name is presented, but he, I like his style. He's a very methodical guy who want to get stuff right. So I think it's a, it's a good, good one to look into. Herb Sutter, the Microsoft uh, chief and evangelist, I would call it. Uh, also a good presenter, uh, has good stuff for a more broader perspective. So he has two good talks on uh, multi-threading. Uh, some a bit older, but uh, still well, very relevant. And Sean Parent, one of my favorites. Uh, somehow he has managed to sail up and understand the language on a level I don't do. And when he talks, it just seems to make sense in a way that it didn't do before. So it's a good guy to look into. Coding techniques. How do you actually write C++ and uh, how can you vary different coding techniques? Better code, runtime polymorphism. Sean Parent shows a way how to avoid having uh, class hierarchies where you actually put the inheritance into the user of a class instead of having to do the class hierarchy on the object you're calling on. It's using some template tricks to do that stuff. So it's more or less type erasure is uh, getting into there. Bjarne Strustrup, uh, in the same line, how to avoid class hierarchies, um, just use the object-based part, constructors, destructors, all that stuff. It seems to be sort of a trend, my takeaway. C++ module. Uh, John Lekos, a bit of a grumpy guy, but he's interesting, has a lot of uh, stuff to say. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good, he's a, he knows his stuff. And then we have Herb Sutter again, writing good C++ by default, talks about how to pass arguments, um, what the move semantics actually gives us today. Modernizing legacy C++ code. Uh, it's Kate Gregory is uh, actually interesting also. She's, she's written code since, uh, well, I was born then, but uh, 78, I think her, her year was, and knows a lot about the craft of making code, more or less. So there's a lot of insight in there. And Ansel again. Libraries. 
that's also good to have. Modern formatting library for C++, I think that's actually uh, sent for standardization, libfmt. Uh, it's a way to mix streams and old style uh, printf things in a type safe way that is quite pleasant to work with. Welcome to the time zone, Howard Hinnant. Um, a guy who really likes details. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, it's impressive talk about what you can do with the time zones. Ranges, uh, also interesting. I haven't really got into it yet, but I understand that once you get into it, you can do a lot of stuff with it. And it's, it's a new topic that's coming. C++ live at head, Titus Winters from Google. Uh, they released uh, App Sale, and he's talking about versioning and semantic versioning versus living at head. I think he had some interesting points in there, so it was interesting. Quite a little gem, system error. If you like uh, error handling, that's something to look into. Maybe not the most uh, splash, uh, flashy area to look into, but it's, I think it was a good talk. Include OS. That's just a cool ID. <laughs> um, I recommend that one. He also uses a lot of um, delegates. And that technique they're using in there with delegates is interesting in its own way. So that's a good one. Frontiers. This is sort of a bit forward looking. Uh, maybe not going to be in the standard, but it's interesting ideas at least. So net good speed, talk about fibers, old ID. But uh, there's a group of people trying to get uh, stack full fibers into the language. And I, I agree with them with the reason why it's a good idea. So it's a good one. There and back again, incremental C++ modules. Richard Smith, the, I think it's the editor of the standard. It's a bit of an older talk, but it uh, highlights some of the problems of actually getting modules into the language. And they are coming at some point. The question is just when. So we'll see. Hopefully 20. Best type rates that C++ doesn't have. That's a bit of um, out there. It's probably not going to make it in. But it's interesting idea. It talks about tombstone traits, where you can have a class signals a number of states it doesn't use. So the users of that class can actually use those states to signal it doesn't occupy a valid state and also other traits to indicate a class is uh, trivial copyable. You can actually use memcop and stuff to on collections of them. Titus, Win Titus Winters again. Um, yeah, that's a good overview of what's happening. I think he's actually done that talk on CPPCon 18 also, but I haven't seen that one yet. Embedded, that's my domain. I'm doing microcontrollers and embedded Linux and that stuff. So Mike Rich, Mike Case, Case is also a good guy to look at when you're doing embedded. Um, very laid back presentation style. So it's a, it's a good watch. Mike Rich is doing a talk on micro increments. So that's uh, test driven development. Maybe it's very down to earth, but the interesting part there is see the entire tool chain they're using, including uh, test and everything to actually test their embedded stuff. So, uh, Dan Sachs, old timer in the C world. He is, uh, that talk is a bit, uh, yet a bit down by it, but it, it, it highlights some of the cultural differences between C and C++. It's, it's good to see if you are interested in C versus C++. And then Jason Turner, also the, what's it called? The C++, C++ cast or, yeah, CPP cast. Yeah, thanks. Rich Cohn and Tiny Computers, he's running a game on Commodore 64 in C++ 17. Quite impressive. So, in summary. You can spend some quality time uh, looking at YouTube, learning stuff, and build your own list of interesting topics that um, can be learned. So that's all for me. Go check it out.